<laughs> Your starter kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody says having a child and having kids for, or having dogs first is like, like dating someone new, but you're still living with your ex girlfriend. We're about to turn off the mics just to test them to make sure they're all good. Okay. Because okay. we have them running with all three mics, and we just want to make sure that the third mic out. All right, so we gotta keep, leave the good stuff <laughs> yeah. for, uh, for later. Check. Hello. Check. Okay. You guys actually still have two minutes to sit awkwardly on stage before we actually start. We're really okay. good at that. So, um, otherwise, I think we should be good. Okay. <coughs> so, what would you guys say now? Let me see if I can get. I'm going to give everyone, most of you guys probably already heard the little spiel, but I'm going to go ahead and give it again for you guys who are coming in. Thank you for coming to the panel. Please remember to put your phones on silent or turn them off or something like that just so they don't make a lot of noise. Um, photography is fine, just not flash photography. Please, no recording. This is going to be a live live stream. What are you guys working on right now? Uh, translucent, like our first superhero book. Translucent? Yeah. Okay. Comes out April. Check out all the panels you missed. You couldn't see because there's all the great panels are always at. I did not see that. That's our, that's our big con pitch for today. We have like an exclusive here for the weekend. Are you guys publishing it yourself or is it through Boom? Through Boom. <laughs> and I'm going to have to uh, repeat their questions for the stream and for the video stuff because we don't have a microphone in the room. So okay. it's not that I don't think you can't hear it. Yeah. I probably can. <laughs> <laughs> I had Jason Aaron here uh, the other day. And he, he, he was a little late, so he rushed in. And I didn't get to tell him beforehand, so I kept on repeating the questions. He goes, what do you think? I'm an idiot? I can't hear this. Oh. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, it was a really funny moment, actually. It's good. Well, welcome to the Secret Origins Room at Emerald City Comic Con. I'm Jonah Weiland from Comic Book Resources. This room is packed because we have here the uh, Coheed and Cambria frontman, Claudio Sanchez, and his lovely wife, Chandra Eckert. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of places I could start with, with you two, but let's start with your current production. You're pregnant. Yes. You have your first baby coming. Yep. <laughs> We're working on that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's really exciting. Are you are you scared? Freaking out? It's it's, uh, you as a, as the dad, the dad's always the one that freaks out a little bit. It yeah, seems. I'm a little nervous. I'm nervous for sure. You know, I it, it I, don't, I don't think it's really going to hit me until he's here. You know, it, it's it is a he. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um and. Uh, you know, we've we've taken a, a few classes. You know, infant CPR and you know, uh, you know, parenting classes, and and even then, it still feels like it's not really yet. You know, it's a little nerves here and there, but you know, when he's here, I think that's probably when I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna freak out. What about for you? <laughs> <laughs> what about for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I grew up around a lot of kids. My mom is one of thirteen, so um, I have sixty some cousins, half of which I you know don't know yet <laughs> so, so there's always babies around so I'm comfortable with the idea of babies but your own is like oh god am I gonna screw this up like no. I can't screw this up <laughs> do you want to have 13 kids yourself uh, no <laughs> I don't think we're, we, we say like let's have four let's have five and then we're like let's let's see how one goes yeah. <laughs> let's test the water you you we, we were kind of joking before we started that you asked me if I had any kids I said no but I have a dog <laughs> and there is there you know that's kind of like the trainer kid it seems these days it is we we uh we've like kicked them off the bed that's like the big news because yeah. Yeah. yeah, they slept with their dogs. Barbara, our, our pug, is the oldest. She's 10? Yep, she's, yeah, she's 10. 10. And so they're just, like, horrified. Like, they don't <laughs> understand what's happening. Like, they're sleeping in their bed, looking at us angrily. I'm sure that's just the beginning of things that will change with those poor little dogs. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. they're our first okay. babies. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some comics here. We're at a Comic-Con, so we're going to talk about some comics. And your uh, next comic is Translucent from Boom Studios, and it's your first take on superheroes. Yes. Because all of the comics that you guys have done before, and you've done before, uh, have been based on your musical work and some of those characters that you've created there mm -hmm. in very fantastical worlds. 
this is a little different, a bit of a departure for you guys. And as I understand, you're not exactly a superhero fan. No, no. So let's, let's start with you on the creation of Translucent. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think it probably started when, uh, when we did the song for the Arkham City soundtrack. Um, you know, I was asked to write a song about, you know, sort of the relationship between the Joker and Batman. And, and, uh, and I, sort of, I sort of got into that whole panel from the killing joke that's always sort of is, are they, are they sharing a laugh or is Batman choking out the Joker? You know, that sort of thing. And, and, and I kind of ate that a little bit and digested it. And, and uh, I decided, well, you know, I love these characters so much. I kind of want to do that, do a story on, on the relationship between hero and villain. And so Shawnee and I sort of got to talking. And, uh, and that's sort of, I guess, the foundation of, of what Translucent was going to be. I also really wanted to tell a story where the, where the villain takes the origins and uses the origin as the weapon, using the catalysts like, you know, mother, father, uh, you know, siblings, and, and sort of transforms them into the weapon. Um, okay. So. And, and talk about the, the, the creation of this character and how you've been producing it and developing it. Why don't you address that a little bit? Yeah, you know, for us it was, it was just this idea of, you know, you take Batman and you, you kind of understand, we don't know necessarily, but we know that, we believe that before Batman's parents were killed, his life was pretty good. You know, he had these happy family, he had money, he had all of these things sort of laid out for him. Um, what if that wasn't the case? You know, what if you know, what if you had this hero who sort of has had a, a really shitty life? I'm sorry, right. to, to say bad words. It's okay. It's <laughs> the <end. laughs> um, you know from from the start and and how his coping with just getting you know all of these ha horrifying things happening to him one after another his entire life would that push him to become a hero or a villain? Mm -hmm. And if he did become a hero, how would how would that affect his life as a hero and his relationship sort of with his arch villain? Right. That's been examined in different ways in comics before. Generally speaking, though, if they have a bad background, they become a bad dude or a bad, yeah. bad girl. Um, and here you have characters that are, it sounds like, making the right choice, making the good choice. Mm -hmm. um, this character's like Punisher, though. You know, he, he, he had bad things happen to him. He became a good guy, but he does very, very, very bad, bad things. Yeah. What, are the, what are the heroes that you've created, and wh where do they go? Where do they go? Um, well, I think, I think it all, for, for, certainly for the Navigator, who is our, our hero, I mean, I, for me, I feel like when he's sort of put into these, into these situations, he's really just looking for a friend, you know, for somebody that sort of understands him. Because his whole existence as a child, losing his parents, or not, not necessarily, well, he does lose them, not in the, in the way that Batman does, but, uh, but you know, coming from this abusive family and, and sort of feeling misunderstood uh, growing up, it's like he's just looking for some, someone that he has something in common with. And he kind of finds that in the villain. And, uh, and so I think that's really kind of the unspoken search of the character is like, well, who am I and, who under, and who do I, where do I fit in? Um, and so he sort of finds that in, in the villain, you know, and uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess that's... Yeah. How do you two collaborate on this book? You know, I know you are a lifelong superhero fan. Mm. You came to comics a little bit later and you're more of the Vertigo image fan. Yes. And I think bringing those two sensibilities will ground any character pretty well. But how do you guys develop together? Um, usually, I think uh, you know I'll come up with like kind of a general idea, or maybe too many ideas, and then I'll sort of bounce them off her. And she, whether or not she likes it, we'll uh, we'll start to kind of build upon it. You know. Um, Definitely, I think you know, not having grown up with comics in the way that he has, um, he he brings so many strengths to the table in terms of. You know, this is this is an action format here. Like, let's where let's come to the story a little bit later and leave a little bit earlier. And um, he's just really good at sort of the execution. For me, what's interesting is the emotional part of of a story, the the psychological happenings of like, you know, how can we make this really dark and yeah. how can we really confuse people? Let's do that. Like, <laughs> you know, so it's it's nice to kind of have to bounce ideas off of each other and get to a point where there's this tangible product that you know, comes across as, as clear and as beautiful and, um, yeah. 
That's it. You know, any 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 creative person will tell you that the creative mind strikes when it wants to. It just mm. happens, and it, it, it could happen in the shower. It can happen when you're walking down the street. It can happen in this room. You never you never know when it's going to happen. And I was talking to one of my reporters who's spoken to you, and he said briefly you, you mentioned that. You know, you'll have an idea come to you at 4 a.m. You'll wake up oh, at 4 a.m. Yeah. It's like, shut up, shut up, wake, 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 wake up. I need to tell you this idea. <laughs> and, 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 like, that struck me as, like, okay, that's very typical of creative people. But I see, I've interviewed you a couple times now, and I see all this stuff happening for you. And I'm wondering if you ever say, okay, this hour of the day, no <laughs> ideas. I don't want to hear about it. How do you give yourself a break? Or do you... Not give yourself. I mean, a break. you know, I it's I have so much fun doing this stuff. Whether it's it's the music or it's it's, you know, creating stories and in whatever sort of manner or fashion, um, it's it's not. You know, I don't need a break. It's I'm you know I'm getting to play, you know, with these things. You know, it, it's it's not hard work. It's a lot of fun. So it's it's hard for me to turn turn that off. Um, you know, so. But it, you know, I'm very fortunate. I could be do you know I could be working uh, a nine to five blue collar job like my dad, and I, and I, I you know not you know I'm, I'm lucky, so it's it's not it's not hard. It's not hard. Actually, we went we the, you know like we don't really take vacations because kind of life is like that. We went to Paris. We're like let's go to Paris for a couple of days and take a break. We literally sat at a cafe and worked. Yeah, we were for done. four days. Like, wow. Drank wine, you know, not not recently, but um, <laughs> <laughs> right before, uh, you know. But it was it, that's what we like to do, you know. And and so for me, uh, the four a.m.s right now are not my friend. I'm not a fan. No, of, no, of, you need to sleep right sleep. now. Yeah. Um, but usually it's just like, okay, this is when it's time. This is when it's time to work. I admire people who are like, I wake up, I write from, you know, nine to one, and then I go to the gym, and I come up. Like, I wish. We could find <laughs> that, like you know, responsible method of working. You, you mentioned you went to Paris, which is a city that inspires many artists. Did you think that that setting inspired you guys even more with this work you were doing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I when I went to Paris in '98, that's when I originally conceived the ideas for the Amory Wars and for Coheed, and uh, you know, this last record that we were doing, um, we were going to tell the story. The, the origins of the character Cyrus Amory, and we thought, what better place to sort of do that, but, you know, mm -hmm. to go back to where the the, uh, the the concept was sort of created. And um, but yeah, I, lo I, lo I love it there. It's so much fun. I, mean, I, I was very fortunate. I got to put, I got to spend like a month there, you know, right out of high school, um, you know. And so I don't know. It, I, I wish I, I wish we could be there now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's so you great. You can if you really want to. We'll all happily go with you. Uh, I'm going to mix this up. We're going to do a little Q&A, okay. and we'll come back to just us again. So cool. if you guys have some questions, throw your hands up, and let's uh, let's see what you got. Go ahead, back there. Yeah, uh, Claudio, I heard that there were some talks about a possible like, movie production or maybe an animated production. Is that a possible venue in the future for some of your previous body of work? The question is about uh, possible films, animation, TV, anything like that for mm -hmm. any of your work. Um, you know, we, we have been, you know, in talks of trying to adapt the Amory Wars, um, you know, but it's very, very slow moving. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of, of uh, stuff to really reveal at the moment, but we'll see. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, in the back? Um, I heard that you guys were uh, thinking of doing a second Key of Z. Uh, any more Key of Z coming from you? Yeah, we've actually been plotting... Uh, a two and a three. You know, the first one, not, you know, took place in on Manhattan Island. It, you know, it was the City Field, Yankee Stadium, MSG, and now, you know, Ewing's going to travel down the. Uh, at the end of that story, he travels down the East River, so he's going to make his way into the Barclays. Uh, there'll be sort of a, a thing there, and then and then back up the Hudson to uh, the Meadowlands into New Jersey. So it's going to be a three part. Have you ever played at MSG? We have, yeah. How crazy is that? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, you know, like MSG. I mean, you know, being a New Yorker, it's it's you know and that, and we we just this last last year we did Radio City, Ooh. you know, another like it's just wow, you Iconic know, the history. Iconic places yeah. to play at. Beautiful. Was it was? I, you're a man of great confidence. Did those places make you a little nervous? Oh, maybe? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, but I, you know, at, at Radio City, uh, there was a piano in the back and. It, in the backstage area, and I don't know if it, uh, what the history of the piano was. I mean, it could have been brought in like the day before. Who knows? <laughs> sure. But you know, just because I'm in the venue, I was like, oh man, I got to sample this piano. So like, I spent hours like 
with like my iPad and like my Zoom uh, stereo recorder and setting it up in situations underneath the piano, like stroking the string, you know, just just so I can have like a file that's like you know Radio City piano. Right? So. <laughs> they probably trucked it in that day, but it's <laughs> yeah, still Radio City piano. Absolutely. There was a question down here. Was it you? Is there a timetable on finishing Amory Wars, and do you have that finish in mind yet? Um, you know, Amory Wars at the moment, uh, there's no timetable. I mean, we're trying to uh, redo Good Apollo 1, which will, which will help. You know, the Fear Through the Eyes of Madness story will sort of help push us into No World, and that will kind of conclude uh, the co eating Cambria story. But with the Afterman uh, prequel kind of thing happening, uh, you know, it's really tough to say. Like, I, I mean, I love, I love doing the Amory Wars because of its relationship with the band. I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to find uh, a future with Coheed minus the Amory Wars. So, uh, um, so I, I don't know. It's really hard to say if, 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 I'll, if I'll ever close it. I mean, but that's you know that's kind of romantic in a way. If that if that were to happen, if I were to actually like like actually stumble across a finite end to that story and say, you know what, I have to, this is it. I mean, that would be beautiful. I would love that actually. You write a whole n second story just about how sad you are about closing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping him. <laughs> Um, uh, my reporter also said he didn't have a lot of details for me, though, so bear with me. He said that you guys are both working on comics projects with other people? Um, well, actually, well, Chandra had a couple of scripts. She had a, scr a script that, that she's sitting on at the moment. Yeah. Um, I, have a I have a science fiction story that I'm, I'm slowly working on. I just actually submitted the outline to Boom the other day, so we'll see. But the, the story that I'm really sort of excited about, aside from Translucent, is I wrote a children's book. Mm. Um, you know, we were on tour, the, this last tour, and, and I started to kind of come up with this concept of, uh, you know, I was thinking about Ziggy Stardust and the spiders from Mars, and I was like, oh, you know, what, what if I could create this persona like that? Um, and I started to jot down this, this poem, and it started to kind of take on a life of its own. And uh, I, I, went, I read it, and I was like, yeah, this, isn't, this isn't rock and roll. But the way it came off, I was like, this is, you know, this is a children's book. And, uh, and so we just started getting that illustrated, and uh, it's beautiful. I mean, I'm gonna th uh, the name of it's Kid Crazy and the Kilowatt King. Hmm. And, uh, and so, uh, but it's, 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 so far it's looking really great, and uh, yeah. What, do you, what are you working on separate from uh, Claudio here? Well, he, I've, been, I've been kind of toying around with this like all ages script for a couple of years. Um, and that, you know, I had a, a painter friend of mine, we were trying to sort of figure out a way to make it time efficient for her to, to paint the book, basically. So she's been doing some character sketches, and it's, it's there. It's just kind of resting until we can figure out the motion for that. You know, there, there are ideas and things kind of constantly being scripted while we're working on things. But as soon as we'll get a little bit into that, this man is like, got an idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. We got an idea. Let's let's do yeah, this. Yeah, and it's yeah. so hard to keep it. Like, okay, we have we have all of this in <laughs> line. Like, just keep that at the back end of the line. But you get so excited and passionate about something, it cuts. Yeah. Yeah. And know, his so. enthusiasm makes me want to work on that. You right. know, I'm like, all right. Let's Creativity isn't exactly organized. Never yeah. No. <laughs> um, talk about inspiration. Uh, you know, you're a very confident musician. You've been doing this for a long time. You're a writer. Uh, uh, you, you come up with these wild ideas. Do they all feed off of each other, or and, and do you get that the confidence that you have in music does that feed into the confidence and the inspiration you get with writing, or are they really separate things for you? Um, you know, it's, it's t like confidence. It's it, I'm, I'm pretty like naturally I'm kind of shy when it comes. You know, and and so being in in a rock band um, has always sort of been tough for me. Hmm. Um, and that, I, think, I think part of that is why I created the Amory Wars initially. It was like this facade to kind of you know, just hide behind. Hmm. Um, so I don't know, I guess maybe that gave me, the, you know, creating this, this, this fiction sort of gave me the confidence to be, you know, 
something else. Certainly when we get on stage, it's, it's, it's almost like a Superman scenario where you're, you know, you're changing into, uh, uh, you know, from your, from your, you know, from who, you know, from Clark Kent into, into Superman. It's like here I, you know, I don't know, I think I'm... No, it, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense. It, it's, it, putting yourself out there specifically versus this, these characters you created requires a lot more vulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that judgment that comes from the audience, whether it be a, a clap or a laugh or a smile, is a very different thing probably when you're the character versus Claudio. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah? yeah? You're, yeah you're, not getting, you know, you're yeah. not getting hurt. Are you getting yeah. more? I, I, it, but you've been at this for a long time I now. Know. Does that still creep back into your head? Uh, what the the, on, the, the so that insecurity? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's so uh, it's so strange. I mean, you know, uh, I just I don't know. I don't I don't know if I'll ever get over it. Most creative people don't. Yeah. And that's part of what drives them. Do you have to constantly remind them you're great? Shut up. Get back to work. Oh, yeah. oh it's, <laughs> it's, horrible, yeah. it's true. Like constantly, you know. But I think. When we talk about we talk about you know, what, you know what are you anxious about? What are you nervous about? What are, what are your fears? And like, you know, being able to communicate is a big part of that. But at the same time, it's like I almost don't want him to be able to communicate about it to to the point where he's like, okay, he figures all these things out because it's so much a part of him and it's so much a part of of what makes him creative and gives him sort of this fuel to stay busy. So um, yeah, I like I like that he's. What? I like that you're a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Likewise, do you, have to, do you have to do the same with her every once in a while when she's working on projects? Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. I got this. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. She, I, I mean, that's what I think uh, you know, brings us, what's, what makes our relationship so great is that we are complete. Like, we're, we're, per, we're opposites. You know, um, and I think we strengthen each other. You know, we bring something to to this relationship that the, you know I have something that she doesn't. You know, we really do sort of complete each other. Not to sound cliche, and uh, uh, you know, but yeah. Sometimes cliches are beautiful. Oh. Be <laughs> uh, let's open up to some more questions. Anybody out there? You in the orange? Yeah, I was curious if uh, you talk a little more translucent. Um, mainly, if we're going to see the superpowers or supernatural stuff, which is going to be more around. He wants to know more about translucent and. Superpowers? Are they going to be in there? No, in in this universe, it's uh, you know they're they're, it's very much like a Batman scenario. You know they are very normal. Um, you know they're brought into these situations because of things that they had experienced, and you know some people want to make a change, and whether it's good or bad, it's you know it's pretty much it. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, you there in the blue? I think. Yeah. I couldn't hear him, so if you could oh, yeah, yeah. Um, repeat the question. Yeah, ba basically, uh, uh, he'd asked um, w why I, why we wrote Year of the Black Rainbow. Is that? Oh, uh, why the, um, like, why the book format? Oh, why we chose to write. Okay, yes, why we chose to write uh, Black Rainbow in prose as opposed to a graphic novel, and are we going to adapt Black Rainbow into a graphic novel? Um, you know, we chose to do that because I, I, for a while I've wanted to adapt the pre existing stories into. Into a into a pro, you know, standard prose, uh, but um, you know because the Amory Wars is sort of out of sync. You know, we, we sort of released everything. You know, part two to four, three. You know, it's just it's kind of all over the place. I decided that with the prose, we would start from one and continue off. And uh, eventually, we will uh, adapt Black Rainbow into a graphic novel. But we're also considering uh, adapting the other existing Amory War stories into into prose. So, um, so second stage, if, if we get to it, will be next. There's another question behind you. Yeah, I wanted to ask about your inspiration. Like, uh, I know you're a big fan of comics and film. What, what kind of movies or what comics do you draw inspiration for Translucent and some of your other bodies of work? Which characters really stood out to you? They get kind of a Watchmen-esque feel a lot, and a lot of times. What kind of comics, TV, film, what, what inspires you from other uh, people? Okay. Um, I think everything sort of inspires me. I mean, if I had to pick stuff from mediums, mediums, media. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, so, like, yeah, everything really. Um, I mean, this one in particular, certainly Batman and Joker were a big influence. Um, also, there's a little Peter Parker in there um, in terms of, you know, the, 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 the means on how the navigator is going to become a crime fighter. Uh, and um, 
But you know, it's it's really everything. Like, you know, I Emory Wars is certainly like a reflection of the things that I've experienced in my life, and um, you know. Uh, Key, Key of Z was very much like a, a love letter to New York City. Um, you know, that's, you know, walking around New York City is why I wrote that. I mean, zombies, sure, I've always had this love of, you know, uh, of, 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 you know, George Romero and, and the Night of the Living Dead and Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead. Also, I mean, it's also a, sort of a nod to Kirkman because Walking Dead was really the book that sort of brought me back into comics. Um, so, uh, you know, I, but but really, just walking around New York City, it's it's a beautiful place. I mean, I've always come up with these ideas of, and 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 ways I can incorporate uh, New York into them. Um, certainly, it's a big big part of the Marvel uh, mythos, and and you know, so it, it, it's just it's a it's a great place. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of Western influence too for Key of Z, a lot of Django. Oh yeah, you know. absolutely. A, you know, a big uh, Sergio Sergio Leone fan, and you can kind of see that. In there a little bit, uh, uh, you know. Kill Audio was was an interesting one because that was sort of my. Uh, it was very much ins inspired by uh, creativity, like go, becoming a, being in a rock band and like moving from uh, an independent label to a major. You find that you know there's more hands in the pot, and you know we were very fortunate, Cohe, because uh, you know we got to kind of write our ticket, um, and. And you know, it's almost like that. If it's, if it's not broke, why fix it? Sort of mentality. But I've watched so many bands, you know, peers, kind of go through these sort of things where you know the, the dollar is really the, the the punctuation on on the statement that you're trying to make. So uh, you know, and so that was sort of my, I guess, like you know, th you know, muse behind Kill Audio was you know that that creativity shouldn't have this limitation. Um, it should be free to kind of. To kind of exist and, and evolve and be its thing, so that was sort of. I, I'm going down the line, <laughs> uh, but uh, but everything, really everything. I mean, you know, there's a little Inception in in Translucid, Lucid, so I really did enjoy that movie when it came out. Um, Other directors or writers that have a greater influence you, over you, over others? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like uh, I was just thinking of that this morning. Like when I was growing up, there was. Uh, I was thinking about the movies that I remembered as a kid. Like you know, you 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 have these experiences when you go to the movie. Mm -hmm. Like okay, I remember, I remember seeing E.T. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember seeing The Goonies. I remember seeing Back to the Future. And then I think about all the other movies I saw, and I'm like, well, I, they they don't sit in my mind. As I remember when we went and saw Goonies, I was uh, in I was in camp. I was a day camp or something, and we decided to sit in the front row. And when that movie ended, and Cindy Lauper's song came, when the t when the title. Right, everybody jumped out of the whole camp, jumped out of its seat and started dancing, wow. and so yeah, it was. Un we were so <laughs> excited about this movie, and then the next time we went as a camp, it was Back to the Future, and I think the reason I remember that is because they didn't allow us to sit in the front seat, <laughs> like, like no front row for you guys. Get in the back. But uh, I do remember um, Shawshank Redemption was another one. It was a big one for me, and Pulp Fiction. I remember seeing Pulp Fiction. Um, in a small theater in Woodstock, and I didn't really know what I was going to see. Same thing with Shawshank Redemption. My favorite movies are the ones that I had no desire to see. Somebody took me to them, and, uh, and, and they just blew me away. I mean, Tarantino, I think, is probably one of my all-time favorites. A New True Romance is, is a big, big favorite of mine, and, and he wrote that, so, um, you know, yeah, I'm, in, I'm in Tarantino. Definitely. Any other questions uh, out here? All the way in the back? Um, so with all the ideas that you have, <laughs> Every <laughs> time. <laughs> Have you had ideas that you've taken to an editor and they tell you it's complete crap? No. <laughs> that was his words. <laughs> you know, not not at the moment, but you know, an editor, an editor very much like in music, a producer, they're sort of the same thing. A producer is kind of the editor of sound. Like you come to them with an idea and they'll try to, you know, make it somewhat, you know, make it a little more understandable for everybody, you know? Uh, and, uh, so usually, I mean, we'll come with ideas and they'll help sort of streamline them. You know, nothing's ever really sort of tossed aside. We haven't had that happen, but I'm sure eventually it will. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, you know sometimes like with, with, with the writings that Chandra and I do, we find that, you know, some of our characters, there are moments where they kind of echo other characters from other stories. And, you know, 
sometimes a, an editor will tell you, well, you know, I think we sort of already did that with this story. You know, can, is there something we can do to make this kind of unique to this, to this title? And, uh, and that'll happen, you know, but, but that's, you, it, it's great to have that perspective. You want that, I think, you know, you don't want to just go into this blind. And we, we had done that years and years ago when we started to self-publish uh, the Amory Wars. You know, we didn't have the right editorial team to really make those first issues shine. And, and now, I mean, we, we love it. I mean, it's just, it's a great relationship to have somebody, an outside perspective, tell you if something, you know, could be strengthened or, or, you know. I mean, I would rather that than someone just tell you it's great. You're, you're, you're rather unique in music. Uh, you're very, very much a self-made man. You've, 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 you've created your own path, and you've gone down that on your own. Uh, so the question I'm going to ask you, I think I might know the answer to, but it, it bears asking. You're a giant comic book fan. Would you want to write a monthly Batman book or a monthly Punisher book or whatever the character is that's, mm. that's your favorite? I, I don't know if I would want to do a monthly, but I have every once in a while I'll jot down in my phone uh, concepts for for storylines. Batman is, is definitely one of them. And I think that that's what really helped uh, 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 inspire Translucid. You know, Translucid is great because it's, it's, our, it's our story. So we don't necessarily have to follow the history. This, what is it, 75 years now? That, right. right. So it's like, it's like we don't necessarily need to dive into um, um, that history. You know, we could really just kind of do our own thing. But there are moments where I, that sounds like fun to me. And I will like sort of research characters that would make sense for that. But um, but yeah, Batman. I've 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 thought of a couple of ideas for, um, but I don't know I don't know if it would be uh, uh, a monthly. Right. It would possibly be more of like a, a short uh, a mini probably. Oh, or a mini. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I I I would I would think though that you you use all your ideas for your own things. That maybe you'd be hesitant to give some of those ideas up to a big corporation. I oh. guess you'd say. Yeah, but you know the thing is, is there there are characters I want to play with. Okay. You know, uh, one of my favorites, and ever you know, Long Halloween I think is one of my favorite Batman stories, um, and uh, the Calendar Man. I thought the Calendar Man was very cool in that. It reminded yeah. me of uh, uh, Hannibal, Hannibal yeah. Lecter, in, in in Silence of the Lambs, and and I th I thought like he, I think that character has. Some interesting, pers he has potential, I think. Um, and I've only really seen him in a light, like that, that light that I really enjoyed. Like you see him in Arkham City, he, uh, mm -hmm. and it's just like, he's kind of dumbed down a little mm -hmm. bit. And I, 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 think of Ca I think of Calendar Man, I put him on, I think of him as like a Riddler, mm -hmm. you know? Um, very methodical, he has the capabilities to be very methodical. And, 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 there's, and if you put him with maybe a, a time traveling villain, um, you know, maybe we throw the Joker in there because you got to throw the. I mean, for me, I just have to <laughs> throw the Joker in there. And you, I think you have a recipe for something that's pretty interesting. Um, uh, and that's what I was, I was sort of thinking about. Um, interesting. You know, you know, uh, Tim Sale, the artist of that series, is here this weekend. Oh, absolutely. My wife actually, she got me uh, uh, a couple of years ago. She got me a, a, a Calendar Man with Gwen Stacy. Too. It took him a minute to convince. He was like, I, "That doesn't make any sense." <laughs> <laughs> like, just please. Gwen Stacy hanging out, sitting on his lap. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it hanging in the house somewhere? No, well, we, we, we actually uh, rented our house out, and we moved into uh, uh, a small apartment in Brooklyn for about a year just to try some things out. But most of my art is now in, uh, is in uh, my storage unit. <laughs> but I do have, a, a, you know, the, the, from, the, from the long Halloween, the absolute edition, um, there's like the, the chapter divider where it's all black. It's, it's heavy ink and it's like sort of a small white Batman. I thought it was beautiful. I got that. And uh, the page in Dark Victory where the calendar man is busting mm -hmm. through the glass about to shoot Alberto Falcone. Um, and I mean, I, I saw that and I was like, this is, I need to have this. And <laughs> I framed them together. Very beautiful. You know, it, it, the, the, the connection between music and comics has become pretty strong mm -hmm. over the years. It didn't always used to be this way. There's numerous musicians that have, uh, uh, I don't know what to say, migrated to comics, but they're, they were, they're always comic fans and they wanted to do their own mm -hmm. thing. What do you think that is? Well, why do you think that that's been such a natural fit? Because it, all, it hasn't always been a natural fit for actors in comics, mm -hmm. uh, even writers of films in comics. It's not always been a natural fit, but music seems to merge pretty nicely with, with comics. I think for me, um, 
You know, when I was growing up listening to music just randomly, whether it was in the car or with my folks, I always had, you know, I thought about something. Like I create my imagination. The music in the car was the, uh, the soundtrack to my imagination. I think I've said that once. And, um, you know, it was, I, I mean, that's, and, and, and you know, I, I guess, you know, being a comics fan, those were the characters that were sort of playing out in my imagination. You know, we're driving down the street, Jimi Hendrix all along the watchtower is happening, and in my mind I see Spider-Man swinging from building to building, you know. And so, so that, for me, I think that was sort of my connection as to why I wanted to kind of push into the, into the, uh, into the, um, into this, you know, and, and also, I mean, if you think about like those great movies, uh, you know, like certainly the John Williams sort of Star Wars, Indiana Jones, you, uh, one time I watched them and I was like, I tried my hardest to, I was like, I, I think this music never stops, you know, through the movie. I think it goes from start to finish, never stops, mm. you know, um, and I mean, I, loving Star Wars, loving Indiana Jones, it's like, you know, I wanted to create those things with rock and roll, and, um, and, and I don't know, it, it, it just, I guess, made sense to me. Um, Interesting. What about you? Do you have any insight as to why these two yeah. mediums come together so easily? It's really interesting because, you, you know, we, in the last, what, how many, 2006, something, 2004, we went to the first convention, something like that? Uh-huh, like yeah. That you're right, I mean, it's just exploded. There's, I don't, I think maybe there's, in a lot, a lot of musicians, I think, you know, from my experience with them, have this sort of, I don't know, maybe outcast mentality, like this underdog mentality, and I think there's a similar vibe, like a small group think in comics and in music. So maybe right. people just feel at home here. You know, you you find your you find your little niche, and that's where you that's where you're comfortable. Uh, that, that, that's that same theme has been found in numerous comic stories over yeah. the years, and that that is the mm -hmm. basis for so many heroes. So maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Because you know what, I think you may have actually just uh, found something there. I think back to my high school days and all the kids who joined bands weren't exactly the cool kids. Yeah, yeah. And, th and totally. that's where they found their place and they found their, their confidence and stuff like that. That's really interesting. And I, I gravitated towards comics because I wasn't a cool kid mm -hmm. either. Totally. And, and so it, it actually does make And you're sense. not seeing, you know, like pop stars very often coming in to, to make comics. They're, they're typically people who have, you know, bands or indie, you sure. know, things like that. Sure. Uh, some more questions from the audience. Uh, uh, actually, did you? Go ahead. Go ahead. You mean the new comics projects, like trans? Are you considering making more music for any of your new comics projects that aren't Coheed and Cambria? Uh, you know, not not at the moment. I mean, I'm not opposed to it, um, but because Coheed sort of has it already, you know, um, you know, I let I sort of let that live and 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 be that, um, you know. But again, I'm not opposed to it. Maybe one day I decide to. I know I know Chandra every once in a while asks me, you know, do you want to put together a small seven inch with, for yeah, whatever. Like we did with Kill Audio. Oh, we did do yeah. that. So we Come did on. do that. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Um, but that, you know, that was kind of cool, actually, because not, you know, um, you know, where, where Emory Wars sort of, they sort of exist in this, like, kind of parallel. Uh, there's a scene in Kill Audio where um, the Bone Beaver receives a seven inch in the mail, and the song sort of hypnotizes him. And so we thought, you know, with subscriptions, that we would, we would give that what was on that 7-inch. And it was this, the theme song, uh, you know, what I envisioned to be the theme song, which was called Gears. So, yeah, we sort of did do that, I guess. But, uh, but I, I'm, I haven't really thought about doing anything quite like the Amory Wars and Coheed with any of the other sort of titles. Keeve Z, I feel like, needed a harmonica track so bad. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a good, soulful harmonica track. Can you play the harmonica? I can, actually. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you had a question. Uh, I was curious about um, if you could talk about the difference between the music driving the story and the story driving the music and, and how you balance that. The difference between the music driving the story and the story driving the music and how do you balance that? Um, That's a tough question. How do I balance it? Um, well, usually, they, they both sort of help feed each other. You know, for me, it's, uh, you know, like the music is, 
when I approach the music, it's usually very personal, you know, um, because again, going back to that earlier question and, and creating this facade, you know, um, you know, I sort of I sort of approach the music. Usually, it's very personal. It's something, an experience that I had, and then I sort of take that and sort of translate it into more of a piece of fiction. Um, but if I don't know if I'm answering this question right or properly, but uh, you know. I know, I know, but I, but I want to be a little. I want to be clear, um, but I don't know if I'm ever clear. <laughs> What's that? Um, no, I think they're both sort of the same, you know, because it, it's it's just different. I guess parts of my creativity, you know, it's like one moment it's, you know, sometimes it's like if if the music, if I'm sort of like struggling with the music. You know, I'll stop doing that, and I'll exercise the other side of my creativity through the books. Um, and sometimes maybe that'll jostle something loose over here, and it'll bring me back to that. So I kind of like seesaw between the two things. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess they kind of work hand in hand. They're not fighting each other. If that's if that kind of answers it. Um, which of you is the better writer? This one. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatic. <laughs> I'll take. I don't think there's, you know, I don't think there's such a, I don't think in, in any capacity that there is really such a thing as a good writer versus a bad writer. I mean, maybe, maybe you have a different style, maybe you choose different words. I think it helps that he's a fan of the things that I write because, you know, it helps us keep a, <laughs> We're still married. So yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's such, a, such a personal thing. It's like, you know, I like all kinds of writers. It doesn't, Hemingway, for example, it's like, there's so much debate. It, was he a good writer? Was he a bad? There's, there's no such thing. If you like it, you like it. Sure. Mm, you absolutely. know? It's, Sure. Well, what's his strengths as a writer? And then I want to, uh, you can start thinking about that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, you can start thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Claudio has a, a lot of strengths as a writer. He, he comes up with an idea a minute. I will sit at my computer for hours agonizing over a panel. Hmm. A panel. Like, I just can't, I can't let it go, you know. And, and he comes in. I said, you know, this is, we have a problem here. What do you think of this? And 12 seconds, he has 13 ideas hmm. with how to fix it. Um, so that I think for for the way that we work together is kind of indispensable. Is just he he's an idea man, and and that comes in the in the form of new stories, in the form of songs, in the form of of quick fixes, in the form of hey this is stupid and this isn't working at all, you know. Whereas and I'll fight for it. I'm like just, I'm keeping it, <laughs> you know, because it's he, I'm sure many of you know you kind of fall in love with things that you write and and. Yeah and you want them to stay, and you're supposed to kill your darlings, but it's really hard. So I think for both of us, we've kind of got a very diplomatic communication skill okay. to say, OK, you know, I know your strengths, and I know you're probably right. Sometimes we've got to take a, take a break. Yeah, but mm, sure. you know, it's, um, yeah, I feel like that, he's really good at structure. He's okay. really good at, at you know, creating a compelling sequence of things that I just sometimes it, it would be like half a novel in the in the dialogue instead of anything actually physically happening. Sure. Um, Claudia, what about Chandra? Um, she's a. Uh, she brings this uh, rhythm to her writing that uh, echoes some of my favorite reads. Um, you know, I like. Uh, I like you know like we, we you know Watchmen is a, is is obviously the one of the cornerstones of, of this of what we do and there's this poet there's this poetic approach to a lot of that that I kind of see in Chandra's certainly when it's a it's a character's inner narration or you know, inner monologue and um, it's those things that I that I, I really love about about her writing um, it really you know it's engaging and it puts me in in an emotional state um, you know and 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 it allows me to, to sort of almost feel like I'm in, in the shoes of that character. Um, so, uh, I mean, that I, I, th I think she brings poetry to what we do. That is a very good answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I'm too emotional right now. <laughs> we have time for one last question. Uh, we can do two. Go right there. So, if you could write a song for the soundtrack of any story, what would you want to do? And I ask this because I just imagine the Dark Tower, Stephen King's The Wizard in the Glass, 
that scene of when they're actually in that mythical Oz, the instrumental seems like it just go perfectly. Instrumental, you want me? So you do you um, want who are we who are we talking to? We're gonna have to talk to somebody today about <laughs> me doing the score. Because that's a, that just got licensed for something? Yes? No? <laughs> <laughs> What story would you want to write? Oh, I'm sorry. Soundtrack too. There you go. Um, what I want to, you know, it's a, it's tough. I mean, I'm sort of, it's a secret right now, but I'm sort of doing something right now that's that. Um, but uh, everything's a secret. At, everything's at Comic -Con, a secret. Isn't it? It's a world of envy. Yeah. everywhere, man. Okay. But uh, um, but if I had my choice, um, if I had my choice. Oh man, I don't, I really don't know. It's so tough. Uh, There's another question over there on the uh, right. Oh, um, there was a concert where Iron Fist you had played, and it was about two or three years before Afterman came out. So is that a story or a song that was meant for, you know, another sort of story, and then you wrote, uh, and it just sort of fit in with the Afterman? And does that happen with your comics? Maybe you find a good segment and then throw it in? Yeah. I didn't quite follow the question, so go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, Sorry. just, uh, um, you know, does, uh, did I, was Iron Fist written for the record, or was it sort of something that was written and, and it fit, you know, a particular concept within the story? And that happens a lot. I do do that. Um, because, again, a lot of these songs are, are coming from very emotional places, and, you know, I have sort of a broad outline of what the story is going to be, um, but then sometimes, you know, maybe a song will sort of help change you know, the avenue that, that that's going to take. So um, that story is going to take. So, so it'll happen, you know, yeah. We have one more question from this side of the room. Go ahead. Uh, about uh, Frostbutter Inferno, I know you didn't really mention it at all. Do you have any, like, avenues to do that as a comic reader? Like yeah. What you believe any avenues for Prizefighter Inferno comics? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I wrote that originally, yeah, that was supposed to be the character of Inferno passes away and Amory Wars gets reincarnated in another parallel world and uh, it becomes this horror, uh, horror story of, of the blood machine. Um, I've always wanted to, uh, but we'll see. It's, it's really not at the top of, uh, of my priority list. Uh, maybe one day something will, uh, you know, inspire me to really put that at the, at the top of the list, you know. But. Claudia Chandra, thank you very much. We're out of thank time. You so Let's much give you a big us. round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, for thank sure. You. That was a lot of fun. What else is on your agenda then? Are you almost wrapped up? I get a two-hour break and then I'll do three more. Oh, yeah. all this then, luxury, you'll never yeah. Oh, I know. Go back to the hotel and just like chill out for a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna try to eat one. Yeah, same here. Oh, lunch is a good idea. I just wanted to get into this. Thank you. And you forget for, to eat. Like, and, the and it's and like, like, like you don't know how it affects me. Like it's gave me so many friendships, like Steve friendships. I just. Yeah.